Hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my channel. And as you can see from the title of today's video, I am doing another vlog. <laughs> this vlog is going to probably be more of a depressing one, at least at the beginning, because a couple of negative things have happened and yeah, I'm going to talk about them just a little bit. But in this vlog, I'm not really going to show the guinea pigs too much in this vlog because I am redoing the pet room and I don't want to accidentally show the new cages and stuff that I've done in the pet room. Oh, and this is going to kind of be a studio vlog too because I launch my shop tomorrow. So let's just get started with the sad stuff so we can move on from it and then get to more of the happy stuff. The first thing is not like super super sad but I mean it is kind of sad but the other day Poffy and Chip my two guinea pigs who bonded about three months ago they their bond broke. I'm not gonna go too into detail I don't want to talk about it for too long but since Coffee and Chip have been bonded. The bond has slowly been getting worse and worse the past couple of months because Coffee is just too aggressive. And no matter what Chip does, Coffee starts attacking him. Chip is not even remotely aggressive towards him at all. He's very calm, submissive. He lets Coffee pretty much do whatever he wants to him. But Chip will literally just be like sitting and like sleeping and Coffee would just like get up and just start biting him for no reason and I was tired of it and I wasn't gonna let it continue. So I did separate their cages and they're now living side by side and Coffee is just gonna be alone for the rest of his life. I am not going to continue to try to bond him with pigs. If he literally cannot be bonded to a baby, there's not that much hope for him. Like he's just, I just think he's too aggressive. Since I did get him from the rescue, the rescue is taking him back. Um, I've already talked to them. They have a rule that like, you know, if you need to rehome your pigs, you bring them back to them. And if any issues arise and stuff like that. So I've only had Chip for a couple of months. I love him. He's like the sweetest little thing, but I don't want him to be alone for the rest of his life because he didn't get along with coffee and I don't want to get any more pigs and just keep adding more and more pigs because males, my males are not getting along. What I plan on doing is Ricky, the guinea pig that I rescued from the pet store that I have a vlog on. He just got done with his month long course of antibiotics and he gets rechecked by the vet in a week or two. And after he is rechecked by the vet and he is cleared by them, I'm going to try to bond Ricky and Chip together and the rescue already approved that I can do this. So I'm gonna try to bond Ricky and Chip together and if they bond really well together, then they're gonna be adopted out together. And then Ricky and Chip will be a bonded pair. So that's my only plan for right now. If that doesn't work out, then basically Ricky and Chip are just going to be at, back at the rescue. Um, I may be fostering them for a little while, but they're not going to be my pigs. So that's bad thing number one that's gone on in this past week. This week has been very chaotic for me. Thing number two, which many of you guys might already know about it because I did post it here on YouTube and I posted it on Instagram, but my rat Ruby actually passed away yesterday. I have cried so much and I don't know if you could hear from my voice and like my eyes and everything. I'm just like exhausted. It was very traumatic and if talking about animal death is triggering to you then I would probably skip past all of this. Yesterday I was letting the rabbits exercise and that's like a whole different story so I'm not going to go into that and then I went to go let the rats do their like little free roam time that I try to do with them every single day where I just open their cage and I let them run around a little bit if they want to and right as I open the cage Ruby started having like seizure or a stroke. I don't really know what it was. Whatever it was, it was, it was bad. It happened so quickly that like I barely even remember every little thing that happened because I wasn't not, like she went from like zero to a hundred in like two seconds and it was very overwhelming. She like fell over on her side. She started like seizing, snot coming from her nose. She was gasping for air like she couldn't breathe. I have no idea what happened to her and it was really traumatic. You know, being a vet assistant for a couple years, I've seen that. I mean, I, I saw it all the time, but like when it's your own pet, it's like so much worse and like traumatic to have to like watch a pet that you have loved for so long, like dying right in front of you. So I called my vet immediately and I told them what was happening and I rushed her immediately to the vet. She was dying and they euthanized her because she she was suffering and I don't know, I like I've been having these feelings of like guilt today, like maybe I should have done something more, like maybe I should have 
gone to an emergency vet to try to see if there was more that they could do or I don't know I've have been feeling really like guilty about the whole situation today like maybe I could have saved her somehow. I brought her home. Um, I let the rats say goodbye to her because everywhere online it says that you need to show the rats their friend so they can grieve properly because if you just take them out of the cage and they never come back again, that's very traumatic for rats. I let them say goodbye and that was really, <laughs> really sad. I let them, you know, lick her and say goodbye and once they acted like they weren't interested in her body anymore, then I took her out and I buried her in the backyard underneath the little pine trees that I have. And they made a little clay paw print with her little paw for me. That all happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it still hasn't really like hit me yet that she's gone. I mean, it has, but it hasn't if it makes sense because it happened so quickly that I haven't really been able to like process the whole situation. But out of all of my rats, Ruby was definitely like the crazy one. She was always the one that wanted to run around and try new things and she was not shy at all. And not having her in the cage is really weird because she would normally be the first one in the front of the cage to like ask for food or to play and now she's gone. So it's just like, it's, it's a really weird. So that was the second bad thing that happened. That's the worst thing. And then, Last night, you know, when rats are grieving, they typically act really sad like humans do. They don't eat as much, they don't drink as much, they they need more attention. So last night I was just, you know, petting the rats, like, you know, telling them that it was okay, giving them some extra little treats and stuff like that. And I heard like little nose whistles and my rats have gotten upper respiratory infections a couple of times like about a year ago they haven't had one in about a year i heard the little nose whistles and i was like okay i'm gonna take them to the vet tomorrow and i also noticed that topaz had a swollen cheek i kind of tried to open her mouth my rats don't really let me touch their faces that much but i tried to open her mouth and i noticed that one of her teeth was outgrowing and it was like curving in her mouth. Um, this morning I called multiple vets because my vet um, is out of town and nobody would take her in except for this one clinic that is an hour away and they're incredible, I've been to them before. So I called them and they told me that I could come in and I came in and they are amazing. I would typically tell you guys what animal hospital, but I don't want people to stalk me or like know where I go and stuff like that. So, but I went to an amazing vet and they got them seen and they did an exam and everything. And they said that Sage was getting an upper respiratory infection. So she was prescribed antibiotics. Topazes, so what happened with Topaz is that her bottom two teeth, instead of growing together and up, they have started growing out and out like this. It's like blurry because of Moji's face, but normally their teeth grow, like the top and bottom grow together and then they grind down each other. So that's how the rats like keep their teeth short and like giving them certain foods and stuff. But genetically Topaz's bottom teeth were growing the wrong way and I didn't notice until it was too late. I don't know, like I, I feel terrible about it because I, I wish I would have noticed sooner, but she has always eaten normally and been completely normal, so I never even noticed it. They took her in the back, they gassed her down just for a couple of minutes, and they completely trimmed her bottom teeth down to where they should be. They gave her some pain meds and prescribed her antibiotics as well. So both of my rats that are still here are both on antibiotics for the next 10 days, so they're good for today. They seem really depressed right now, so I've just been giving them a little bit more attention than I normally do and giving them some treats and stuff. And I'm hoping since they still have each other, they'll be okay. It's been a lot. My head is like literally pounding right now. I really need to take a nap. That is all the sad updates with my animals. And hopefully that's the last sad updates for a while. So to get to the more positive stuff, I am filming many different vlogs <laughs> right now. So I don't know what has been up and what hasn't been up, but I'm filming like pet transformation videos, I'm filming rabbit videos. I'm filming a lot right now, so a lot of videos are coming, but this video is kind of being more of a studio vlog update vlog, so I hope it isn't too boring. But if you guys don't know, I do have a shop called weeksandwitches.com and I sell handmade products for guinea pigs and humans. I'm gonna show you guys some of the products. So I have been working on these products for a little while now. As you can see, I've moved 
all of my craft stuff into here. It is very chaotic, but all of my yarn is in here, all of my fleece is in here, all of my shipping stuff, so shop stuff is in here basically. But I have been making pee pads that I'm going to be selling on my shop tomorrow. These are 14 inch by 14 inch pee pads. They have double layers of U-Haul on the inside, so they're super cozy and super thick, super absorbent. And I've made six different designs for my first launch, and I tried to choose ones that were kind of witchy and give them, like, witchy or fun names. So I'll show you guys these. So this print right here is called New Moon, obviously named after the Twilight movie New Moon because I love Twilight. <laughs> then this fleece is my personal favorite. I know some people really don't like fleeces like this, but the only reason I'm obsessed with this is because it reminds me of Howl's Moving Castle. I named this Howl's Breakfast. So this is the pattern Howl's Breakfast and the bottom is like this really pretty brown color. It's just so nice. Like I, I really need to make one for myself because I love this pattern. Then this pattern right here is called Edmund's Death and this is in reference to Bridgerton because Edmund Bridgerton died from a bee sting. So I made, called it Edmund's Death. Black at the bottom, I love this print, it's so soft. Then we have this one. This is my second favorite print. Um, a lot of people actually didn't vote for this one, which I'm surprised about because I find this print to be absolutely stunning. But I called this Butterfly Garden. So the front is this really pretty print and the back is this mustard color. Then we have this print right here. I love this one as well. As you guys can tell, I love florals. This one is called The Meadow and I named this one after the meadow that they lay in in Twilight. A lot of Twilight references here, but the top is this pretty floral and the bottom is this beautiful like plum color. And then this last print right here is called The Demigorgon because these flowers look like the Demigorgon monsters from Stranger Things. I love Stranger Things. I just finished the new season and I'm, I just love Stranger Things. So I had to name it after the Demogorgons because that's what it looks like to me. Um, this fleece, when I bought it at the time, I bought it a couple months ago, was very, very expensive. So these pee pads in this print are way thicker than these because this fleece was like luxury. So these are some really nice thick pee pads. Whoever gets these, I hope they like them because these are incredibly thick and really, really nice. So this is the Demogorgon print. So yeah, these are all the pee pads I made. I was able to make 19 pee pads in the past two weeks, which is pretty good for me considering I am very, very busy all the time with all of my animals and working and stuff. So pretty proud of myself for that. And these are all going to be sold tomorrow. And then additionally to making pee pads, I've also been making some keychains. Please ignore all of this, but made this keychain right here called the Elm keychain. Obviously my hamster is not this chunky or this big gray like her. Made some Jack and Zero keychains after my bunnies. So I have another one that I'm making downstairs. So I'll have two zero and two of Jack. And then I also have two of these carrot keychains, which I'm obsessed with this. I want to make more like food keychains. Um, so those more food keychains are definitely going to be coming soon. Yeah, I've been having some fun making some new keychains. More guinea pig ones are definitely coming in the future. But for right now, I wanted to make something a little bit different. So yeah, that was a little, actually a large update of sad news and shop stuff. So like I said, my shop opens tomorrow. So I'm just going to go ahead and end this part of the vlog right now. And I will update you guys tomorrow when the shop opens. And we'll see if anything sells out. Hey guys, so it is the next day. I launched my shop this morning and I sold out of all of the pee pads. So they sold out in about an hour, which I think is really great. I do still have my keychains all up for sale. I am surprised that the keychains didn't go first because my keychains always sell out really fast. So maybe my rabbit and hamster keychains are just not like people don't like them or something. So maybe I'm not gonna make them anymore in the future. They're still for sale and I'll see if anybody buys them. If not, I guess I'll never sell them again, but I'm happy that all of the pee pads sold out and considering that they sold out as quick as they did, um, I'm definitely going to continue to make them in the future because you guys seem to want them. But yeah, I'm actually not going to be packing the orders today. Today is Friday. I am going to pack the orders tomorrow because all of the packages won't be shipped out until Monday anyway. So I'm not feeling very good today. Um, I think I'm coming down with a 
a little bit of a cold or something. So I'm just going to relax today, but tomorrow I plan on packing all of the orders. Hey guys, so it's two days later and I just woke up. That's why I look crazy, but um, I figured I'd update you guys on the goldfish. And the reason I'm updating you guys is because I'm having a little bit of a problem with the tank. Um, as you can see, actually you might not even be able to see, the fish tank is very cloudy and I've been doing water changes and all of the perimeters of the water are completely normal except there are a little bit more nitrates than I would like. And because there are so many nitrates, that is what is causing the tank to get all cloudy. Because from what I understand from researching is that there is too much like of that good like minerals and bacteria in the tank that it's causing the cloudiness and the biofilm and the algae and everything to form very quickly. Even though I've been doing water changes and I also recently did like my monthly cleaning of the filters and stuff. I did not clean with tap water, I cleaned with the aquarium water. Um, after cleaning everything, um, it still stayed pretty cloudy. So I did some research and it seemed like a lot of people recommended putting these two things together in the tank and after like at least a week the tank should be completely clear and not cloudy anymore because these products right here like balance out the bacteria and make the water quality better so i hope i researched correctly um there was a lot of people that recommended pairing these two things together please feel free to comment down below and let me know what you think i mean by the time this video is out these things have been already used so i don't know how much that would help but maybe someone who is a little bit more knowledgeable than me i want this water to be clear um i don't like how cloudy it is it makes the tank look dirty even though it isn't because i clean this tank every single day and i do water changes like twice a week right now so i bought the Seachem pristine this is natural organic waste management it rapidly and safely eliminates sludge and detritus i don't know if i said that right this is for marine and salt water and then this right here is called Seachem Purigen, and this is synthetic filter resin. It also removes organic waste and you put it inside of the filter. Here's what it looks like. It's just like this, it almost looks like sand. So I have to rinse it out. I need to rinse it out in the sink before putting it in my filter. And then I gotta put five capfuls of this inside of the tank. So let me show you what it looks like. If the fish are up front, they don't look cloudy, but if the fish are in the back of the tank, it looks super, super cloudy. And as you can tell, it just makes the tank look dirty, even though it isn't. The girls are doing really, really good. Here is Laguna. And then there is Lilith. They've been doing really, really great. so it is the next day so I am going to pack some orders my new logo stickers are supposed to be delivered today so right now I'm gonna pack the orders that are under $25 because if you spend $25 you get a free logo sticker if you don't then you don't get a free logo sticker so I have a couple of orders that did not spend over 25 so I'm gonna pack these first and hopefully the stickers come in time today and I'll pack the rest of the orders I was gonna go live on Instagram packing all the orders but my throat is hurting so bad right now and I just do not feel good at all and I don't feel like talking for like two hours straight. So I am just going to show you how I'm going to pack my pee pads. I do have small boxes for like bigger orders but all of the orders that I got this past launch are small enough to fit in poly mailers so that is what I'm going to be doing. Oh I also forgot to show you guys that I got some little business cards made. And here is what they look like. They're like this really glossy material. It just says, thank you for your purchase. And then it tells people that they can tag me on Instagram to be featured on the website. And then on the back, I have some art that I made. It's just a witch hat with a guinea pig on the inside of it. So I just got those made to put inside of orders so people know where to contact me. So the first order I'm going to pack is from Katie from Ohio. And Katie ordered one of the Demigorgon pee pads. I'm going to lint roll every single pee pad because I do live in a house full of animals. So obviously there's going to be some hair on it naturally because I mean the hair is just 
everywhere. So if there is a little bit of hair that didn't come off, I am so, so sorry. It's definitely um, not something that I do on purpose. Okay, after it took me like 10 minutes to get all the hair off of this, I just used a scrap piece of fleece that I saved and I rolled it up and tied it like that to make it smaller. And then what I'm going to do is take this little invoice here and also a business card. And I just kind of like shove them both in there like that. And then I'm going to put them in this big poly mailer that I have. All right, I taped it all up and then, and then I'm just going to write Katie's name on this so I can weigh it and then make like a shipping label for it. So there was the first order. Next, we have the carrot keychain and this is going to Rachel. So it's already just ready to be packed. I'm going to put it in this little box and then the box is going to go into a poly mailer. I'm going to use some of the shredded paper that I have. And I'm going to put it in there. I love that carrot keychain. It's probably one of my favorite keychains that I have ever done. I definitely plan on making more like food related ones. So I'm also going to fold up invoice, add a business card to the top of the box, and then close up the box. So since it's a carrot and it's not something like spooky, I'm actually, I have a lot of these like really cute stickers that I have. So I'm just going to take some of these like really cute stickers and decorate the box with them because I have so many of them. Like I literally have thousands of these cute little stickers. So might as well use them for someone else's entertainment. Got some cute little stickers here. And then I am going to use my rainbow ribbon that I have because I don't have any other ribbon at the moment and Rainbow pretty much matches everything, so whatever, it's not a big deal. All right, so I am just going to go ahead and pack the rest of these orders, and then I'll show you what it looks like after. So if my week couldn't get any worse, I went to go print some shipping labels for the four that I've packaged so far. My $600 printer that I bought like two, or a year or two years ago stopped printing. Um, I did all of the like maintenance stuff to it, like deep cleaning it, aligning the nozzles, making sure that the print heads are clean. I literally have done everything with that printer and it won't print. So I've got to figure out what the heck's going on with that. I don't have time for that right now. I've been wanting to buy a little label printer for a while now because it's thermal. So it saves ink. I don't have to use ink. It's just a thermal printer. And because of the prime deals going on right now, I got one for $100, which is like amazing. So I have a thermal printer coming tomorrow. So I'm going to finish packing all of the orders today and put the labels on all of the packages. Okay, so I just finished packing all of the orders. So we have a bunch of poly mailers and a big box here. And when the thermal printer comes tomorrow, I'll be putting the shipping labels on all of them and then they will be shipped out on Monday. So thank you to everybody who bought from me. But I already have people messaging me and asking me when I'm going to be selling more pee pads and I promise like this next week, I'm gonna start making more. Um, I'm almost out of fleece though. So I do have to make a big order at Joann's and get some more fleece. Um, Halloween stuff is starting to come out and you guys know the theme of my shop is very Halloween oriented. So I'm trying to get that early Halloween fleece so I can just start selling Halloween stuff as soon as possible because you guys know like Halloween is my favorite time of the year. I thrive during Halloween and during the fall season. So Halloween stuff will come as soon as I can buy it from Joanne. And um, I'm gonna continue to make pee pads and stuff um, since you guys seem to like them. So yeah, I'll update you guys later. Hey guys, so it's the next day. I'm filming from the top of my sewing machine because Twyla is in my chair and I can't sit down. But this morning, my packages were delivered of the little label printer that I bought. So I got 500 sheets of thermal label paper to make the shipping labels. And then this is the label printer right here. It had almost five star reviews on Amazon. 
It's by the brand Polano. I got it for a hundred dollars, guys. It was normally like 140 and they had a $40 off coupon for like Prime Week or something like that. So I got this for a hundred dollars, which is really, really good. And it's a thermal printer, which means it prints by using heat, so you don't have to pay for ink, which is amazing, which is exactly what I want because my printer, like I said, stopped working. I gotta figure out why it's not working, but ink is also pretty expensive for it because it's a very expensive printer. So not having to pay for ink would be really great, especially having a small business. So I got the one that had purple on it because I love the color purple. And I'm gonna hook it up to my laptop and we're gonna try to print some labels today. So I'm about to go out and I'm about to do some book related stuff for my reading channel. If you guys didn't know, I have a reading channel if you guys like to read and then I'll print those labels when I get back. My stickers that were supposed to be delivered yesterday with my new logo were not delivered. They were out for delivery and they never came, so hopefully they come on Monday. And now Austin's FaceTiming me because he's bonding. Hey, where are you? Yeah, he's right there. Yeah, um... Okay guys, it has been one day since adding the pristine to the tank and you can see it's very cloudy. So it says on the product and the reviews that it will get cloudier before it gets completely clear and it takes about two to three days to go clear. So I'm hoping when I wake up tomorrow, it'll start clearing up because it is so cloudy. I mean, it's so cloudy you can't even see the filter back there. Here's what it looks like from this angle. And I know it looks super dirty, but I promise you guys, it's not affecting the goldfish in any way. It just is doing its stuff and it's switching over the nitrates to something a little bit better and beneficial, I believe. Like I said, don't quote me on that. I don't know all the scientific terms for it, but this is what it's supposed to do. And yeah, I just have way too many nitrates in the water right now. We don't need too many nitrates. Nitrates are good, but not too many of them. So hopefully when we wake up tomorrow, we will see a clear tank, but here they are. They're waiting for me to feed them. They are very, very food motivated, as you can see. I'm actually going to make them some peas, so I'll show you how I do it. All right, so as you can see here, I have a bag of green peas. And the reason you're supposed to give peas to a lot of different kinds of fish is because fish are prone to swim bladder disease and green peas helps them become unconstipated. So if they're becoming a little constipated, and it happens for too long, they can get swim bladder disease and a lot of fish die from that. I've actually had a beta fish die from swim bladder disease, a couple of them actually, um, because I didn't really know about green peas at the time. So what I do is I let the water heat up in my sink and then I put the water inside of a little bowl and then I put about three peas each for each fish into the bowl and I let it sit for a couple minutes so it softens and then I peel the outside layer of the pea off. They don't have to eat the skin because apparently the skin is not very good for them. It's what's inside of it. So I'm gonna heat up the water and then show you what I do and then we'll feed them. Okay, so if you see here, I let it sit for just a couple minutes. Here's the pea. If you just squeeze the pea, the inside of it will pop out and you'll have like these two little pieces of pea here. This is what you feed the fish and you just throw the skin out. So it literally took like two minutes to do that. Sometimes the peas will not come out correctly. So you may have to make some more, but usually they pop right on out like they should. So now we have some peas here. I do this about twice a week for them and I also give them some spinach too. So let's see if they'll eat it. I normally just kind of drop it in. They're really slow, so they don't realize that the food sunk to the bottom, <laughs> but they'll go down and get it. Like I said, goldfish are not the smartest fish on earth. Okay, let's see if she'll notice. There she goes. There they go. Like I said, they're not the, the brightest fish, but they're pretty. She is such a pretty fish. I literally just sit here and I just watch her all day. So it's been like two weeks since I did that treatment on the fish tank and I feel like it didn't do anything. It said online that it was supposed to work within like three to four days and it took two weeks and it started working after I did like a 50% water change. Tank is pretty much all the way clear again. I mean, it's a little foggy. We're going back to it being clear again. All the water perimeters are good. The nitrates are back down. So everything is looking good. The fish are looking good. And I bought, <laughs> I bought a pothos plant because I wanted to hang the pothos inside of the aquarium because I've seen a lot of people use that to help absorb those extra nutrients in the water. 
It also grows the plants very quickly because pothos are very low light plants and they do well when you stick the stems of them into like the filter or just the water in general. And I decided to go ahead and buy one. So I'm gonna open it. Um, I don't know much about live plants. I've not really done much research on plants. The most I've had are like succulents and I couldn't even keep those alive. So we're trying, we're gonna try here. If I kill a pothos plant, I think there's no hope for me. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, one second, one second. Ah, uh, it smells like dirt. I should have opened this up over the sink because now I got dirt all over my dining room table. But this pothos plant is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So now I've gotta figure out like where I want to cut this. And then this is really cool actually because I can cut a couple off and put it into my aquarium. And then I can also put it in different rooms of the house. I know that pothos is toxic to cats. So I will not put it near where my cats and dogs and can eat them and stuff. And I also need to get a vase because the plant is just in one of those like growing pots right now if you guys have any advice for pothos please feel free to comment down below like i said i don't know much about plants so i'm trying my best here okay so over here on this side there's already some that are like hanging down pretty far so i think i want to use these first okay so online it says to to propagate the pothos you're supposed to trim four to six inches below the root node and i believe the node is like this little piece right here so that is what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna cut it at like an angle i use some pretty sharp scissors so here is our first one here like i said i don't really know what i'm doing okay let's put the first one in the filter i love the way it looks when people have plants inside their filter and there's also like this little hole right here that would just fit the plant perfectly yeah we're gonna put that there i think i'm gonna put one maybe on the other side too but you do have to be careful because the roots will start growing into the filter which i don't think is necessarily like a terrible thing but some people might not like that okay i feel like these holes right here are a really good place for the plants because it holds them into the water like that but also when i lift the lid like it doesn't smash the plant at all so my plan is, is if it grows really tall i'm gonna like hang it up across the wall So I think it's the next day since I last updated you and I'm about to do some guinea pig baths. I said this in another vlog. I don't think I've said it yet, but Belle and Stephanie may be adopted on Sunday. If you don't know who Belle and Stephanie are, they are my two foster pigs. Um, they gave birth to five babies when they were with me. We let them recover and they were put up for adoption and someone is interested in them. So I am dropping them off with the rescue tomorrow and hopefully they get adopted but I wanted to give them a full bath and like health check before they go to the new owner, hopefully. Pretty sure they haven't had a bath in their life. I'm not 100% sure on that. You should not give guinea pigs baths all the time. Once or twice a year is completely fine. Unless you have a pig that needs like butt baths often, that's a different story, but you really don't need to give guinea pigs baths. They don't need it. But I'm gonna wash them in the Myconazole shampoo. This is an antifungal shampoo. It helps with like ringworm and fungal infections, but it's also just fine to use as like a preventative. And then I'm gonna give them a little bit of ivermectin while they're with me to help prevent against mites and all of that stuff. And then I'm gonna trim their nails if they need it. I have them both in my bathtub here. This is my other bathroom since my pet bathroom is not clean enough right now. They're still very, very skittish. Uh, I've been trying to work with them, but I feel like no matter what I do, they're just very scared. It's going to take them a lot of time and a constant home for them to really, really get used to humans and everything because the majority of their time with me, they were pregnant. So I didn't want to handle them too much because handling pregnant pigs can make them really uncomfortable. So I didn't really have too much time. So they're fine with pets and everything like that. Like once they're settled down, as you can see, 
but they do get scared very easily, but they do love food and they're definitely getting better. And Stephanie scratched the crap out of my hand earlier. So yeah, I have a little liner in here and I put that little blanket so they could hide if they want. But I already have a whole video on how I give guinea pig baths, so this isn't a tutorial. I just figured I'd film it for you guys. So I'm going to heat up the water and I'm just going to bathe them the best that I can. I have my towel back here to dry them off. I'm going to dry them off with a hair dryer before I put them back in their cage. All right, we're gonna do Stephanie first. As you can see, she is a kicker. It takes her a while to really get used to people, but I'm going to trim her nails. It looks like they do need it. All right, did the nail trim. Now I'm just going to do the bath as fast as possible because she is a fighter. Okay, I have her wrapped in the little blanket now. Look how cute she is. I'm gonna give her a little bit of ivermectin. Just a pea size amount. All right, let's do Miss Belle now. Her nails aren't as bad. It's okay. It's okay, Belle. All right, then we have Miss Belle. She definitely fought a lot more than Stephanie did, like a lot more, but we did it. We got through it. She tried to bite me a couple times, but you know what? We prevailed and just gave her her ivermectin. So there we go. Now I'm just going to dry them with a low heat on the hair dryer and we'll be done. And then I also did some stuff with the bunny room, so I'll show you that now. All right, now that we've finished giving them a bath, now I'm going to show you the bunny room. So this morning I finally was able to open up the entire area and clean the entire room and make it all bunny proof and everything like that. So that's what I spent this morning doing. It looks so empty in here since it's like all opened up. So I definitely need to get them some more stuff. And I do have some more stuff that I'm gonna put in here. They have been doing really well since the video came out where I adopted Jack. Um, no fighting or anything like that. Jack um, has been pooping outside of the litter box. Don't know what's up with that. I hope he starts using the litter box again. I've just been vacuuming all the poops up so he doesn't think that he can poop all the time. It's probably like a territory thing because he doesn't pee. The only place that he has peed is on one of his beds and I'm currently washing that. But yeah, I just gave them like this cardboard hidey house, some tunnels, some toys and stuff. Up here we have the shelf with the camera and I'm hiding the cord with the trash can and the trash can is very heavy so the bunnies definitely can't move that. Then down here I have the X-Pin wrapped all the way around this back wall here which is protecting the cord of the air purifier. And then it goes over here, which protects them from going over to where the rats are. But yeah, here's the old Jack Jack. He's been doing really, really well. He is so, so sweet. Definitely a huge change in personality from him with Zero because Zero is crazy and he is very calm. But yeah, I told you guys I would give you an update on this room, so. Here's the update. I still need to get some art on the walls and stuff like that, but for right now, I think it looks really nice and they can run around and play if they want. They don't tend to leave the carpet just because they have more traction on the carpet. So I definitely want to get like another one to go right here so they can have more space. I've been so busy today. I cleaned both pet rooms and then gave a bath to the fosters and then did some sewing and I'm about to do some editing and I just packed some orders for you guys. Put up some pee pads for sale, some 14 inch by 14 inch pee pads and I sold some of them. There are a couple left. I don't know if they'll be up by the time this video is up, but I'll have my website down below. It's weeksandwitches.com. These aren't finished yet. I still have to sew the inseam, but I have two of the house Breakfast pattern, which is my personal favorite. And then I have two of the New Moon pattern here. But I wanna thank a couple people right here who bought some stuff. So Rachel bought two pee pads, Ella bought two pee pads, and Danielle bought three pee pads. So I'm gonna ship these all out in the morning. But yeah, I'm actually going to edit this video because I would like to get it up this weekend. Like I said, Belle and Stephanie and Ricky is going to the vet tomorrow and Ricky will be coming back home with me. And then Belle and Stephanie will be going to the rescue 
and hopefully getting adopted this weekend. So yay, very exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was random. I have a lot of random stuff that I do every single day, so I figured I would film some of it for you guys. Make sure to check out my social medias down below if you guys would like to stay updated with future content. I also have my Patreon down below if you guys would like early access content to videos and transformations and a bunch of random stuff. But yeah, until my next video, I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.